Hey, what's up fasters? Dr. Legrand here, here for another fasting video. If you are new here and haven't subscribed to our channel and want to know more about fasting tips and tricks and also science videos on fasting, we talk about all different types of fasting here. So hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any other fasting videos that we do here on this channel. So today we're going to talk about lab values during fasting. So what kind of labs that change while you're fasting, if you decide to do blood work or do your analysis with your doctor, these are some lab values that you could see while you are fasting. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first off, and I understand that um, my handwriting is not the best, so uh, don't worry, I'm going to put um, some, you know, like I've kind of done before, little segments here of what it says right here when I go over each point. So don't worry, let's go ahead and get started. But the first one is that really when it comes to when you're doing a fast, Obviously, the very most common one is that you're going to lose some salt in your system or electrolytes. So really salt loss. Uh, and what you'll really kind of see with sodium, initially you're going to see about 150 to 250 milliequivalents per liter of actually loss of sodium initially. Then when you get like further into it, usually you're roughly losing only about 1 to 15 milliequivalents. But when you're first doing your fast the first day, you're going to lose that per day. And then you can lose about 40 to 45 milliequivalents of potassium per day. And then same thing applies. That does go down when you get further to a more prolonged fast. But the first couple of days, that's how much you're going to be losing per day. Then going to blood glucose. So with blood glucose, we can lose, and this is kind of common to see people drop their blood glucose to 45 to 65 milligrams per deciliter. Now, there is some people that where it'll spike initially, especially if people who are already sugar sensitive to begin with and have some insulin resistance, there will probably be that initial spike, especially for people who do the keto diet. They find that this can happen initially where it can spike up to about 110 or so, but then it will level out. But for most people, you'll see it drop, and then, of course, after a while, it'll start to plateau to a more even balance. Then going on, moving over to cholesterol and triglycerides, initially when you do fast, you will see it elevate. Now, why does it elevate? You think about it, th the fasting process is detoxifying, it's breaking down, it's breaking a lot in our body, a lot of the fat cells, so you'll see that initially go up. But then after the fast, if you do blood work, you'll see that they actually will have decreased from what your initial cholesterol levels were if you actually did blood work. So I do encourage people to do blood work before you do a fast so you see where your baseline is on everything. And then if you're doing a long fast, especially if you go do it at a clinic, a fasting clinic, they will take your, you know, blood samples within, you know, probably every, you know, three to five days to kind of see where those levels are changing. And then of course when you finish your fast, see where they are, and then of course a week after. Those are good things to kind of check to see what kind of benefits that you're receiving as you are fasting. So the next thing that you, this is a big concern for, especially for people who have gout, is that uric acid levels do increase during fasting. So if you are one of those people that have already gout symptoms, you want to be very cautious about fasting. You specifically want to be make sure you're drinking plenty of water while you're fasting so that it gets things moved out moving the uric acid so that way you're not having to deal with flare-ups while you're doing the fast, especially the water fast. The other things that do um, increase is hemoglobin and hematocrit and red blood cells do increase initially because of people who don't drink enough water while they're doing their fast. Obviously with uh, dry fasting it is different, but really when you should be doing water fasting you do lose about 30% of your water intake because you get 30% a lot from our food. So making sure you're getting plenty of water. I have talked about how much water you should be drinking. I'll leave a link up of here to check that out. I'm not going to go into more detail about it. I've already talked enough about that. But going on to the next thing is that ESR and CRP levels do increase. Now what are ESR and CRP? Uh, those are two typical things that uh, do elevate it's a, it's a marker for inflammation in the body, and they do elevate initially during fasting, but then afterwards you'll see them decrease than what they were initially were before the fast. So we have talked about this before in our fasting videos is that inflammation does decrease with fasting, and this is a marker that you can measure is ESR and CRP levels 
in your blood work. So definitely checking that, especially if you tend to have inflammation issues, is have your doctor be checking that. So all these, obviously you're gonna have to have a doctor run these tests is something I do test with my patients when they're going through fasting, is checking these levels. And you'll certainly want to have a doctor that will work with you while you're trying to meet your health goals. And then moving on to the next piece is that insulin and insulin growth factors like factors leptin and thyroid hormones will decrease while you are fasting. Now with hormone, thyroid hormone, it will initially decrease, but once you reach ketosis, uh, thyroid levels will go back up. It'll go back to a normal pace level where it needs to be at, but insulin and leptin levels for sure will decrease as well as insulin growth fat like factors will decrease while you are fasting we've talked about also that in our other videos as well other things that will um, change is of course growth hormones we've talked about this a lot as well as glucagon levels will increase during fasting glucagon is what's going to help break down your fat cells growth hormones is what's going to preserve your muscles as well as your bones while you're fasting so very important while you're fasting to make sure we're preserving our muscles and our bones so the other things that do change is norepinephrine and melatonin levels do increase. So obviously melatonin, that's helpful for sleep, and that's going to be very beneficial for you, for people who are dealing with sleep issues, is that melatonin levels can get more stabilized and can increase during fasting. And we do need to rest more while we're fasting, so that's going to be very helpful when we do need to rest when we are fasting. So the next thing is, of course, looking at adrenal hormones. So adrenal hormones do actually do elevate initially when uh, you are fasting. And if we think about the adrenals, adrenals sit right above the kidneys and they deal with a lot of different stress hormones. So ones that we're looking at is adrenaline that will increase initially, uh, noradrenaline, cortisol uh, will also increase during fasting. And this just happens initially and then it does stabilize. This does happen through you know one to about four days through the initial fast and after that it does decrease. The next part is that female hormones do, do fall. So if for any women that are trying to conceive, fasting is definitely not something you should be doing. Obviously, if you have had issues of getting pregnant, it is beneficial to do fasting. But then when you're trying to conceive, obviously not to fast because your female hormones do decrease. Progesterone estrogen though, has been known to decrease and fall during fasting. The other thing is also looking at your analysis. So something that is very important to look at is at your analysis when it comes to fasting and things that can change in your urine. And this is something that we check in labs is bilirubin can increase as well as uh, protein traces. A protein can be shown in the urinalysis as well as ketones. Obviously ketones because when you're in a ketosis state, your ketone levels are going to go up. So that's going to show up in your urinalysis, obviously. And then other things that can be shown up is increase a urine cast. So things such as like hyaline and red blood cells as well as white blood cells can be shown in the urinalysis while you're fasting because what's happening is we're going through autophagy. We're also going through things that uh, are getting rid of unnecessary cells and it can show up in the urinalysis that can be possible. And so nothing to be too concerned, but while you're working with the doctor, if there is elevated levels of blood in the urine then we might be dealing with something as more as like a kidney infection so you definitely want to make sure you're watching that and checking that and making sure you're going through a doctor to see because it does happen people can get kidney stones people can get kidney infections especially for you who are people who are doing dry fasting you got to be really careful on that but if you're doing water fasting just making sure you're drinking plenty enough water if you do have issues of getting kidney stones and also urinary tract infections Make sure you're being careful while you're fasting and stick with more water fasting and not dry fasting. So other thing, last thing I want to kind of mention here is that what can be increased is creatinine levels may happen as well. They may increase during fasting and this is where you should be cautious. I know somebody asked on this channel about, uh, about creatine levels and if you already initially have high levels of creatine levels, you really got to be careful when it comes to fasting and making sure that your doctor is checking those levels as you're fasting because you don't want those to be skyrocketing. If they are, you definitely need to break the fast. A lot of these things, especially with your sodium potassium ratios, if they really get out of balance, and I know I've talked about this in one of my other videos when it comes to out of balance, 
But if you guys are interested in finding out about more about what things you need to do, what signs and symptoms that you need to find out, especially when it comes to labs, when it comes to needing to break a fast, especially if you're working with a doctor, I will talk about that in my one of my other upcoming videos about what you need to be looking for in your lab work and other kind of signs that you can see and symptoms when it comes to knowing if you need to break a fast. If you guys like this video, give us a big thumbs up. It really does help us out. Share with your family and friends as well as, you know, if you have not subscribed to this channel already, hit the subscribe button over here. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other fasting videos that we do here. As well as check out some of these other videos that I leave here so you can check out if you've not seen those already. Until next time, love you guys. And this is Dr. Legrand signing out. Thanks. Bye.